So, after the bird was um, showing that it was going back and forth, no problem, at that point we said, okay, we need to get this bird out of here right now. And um, folks at our center um, sort of arranged the, the date and everything with, um, with Blair here. And, um, <laughs> there we go. Um, for this, uh, this wonderful release site. And, um, and like it's been uh, said already, they, they re, um, the bird was actually found approximately uh, 15 minutes from here. So uh, this, that'll, if our bird wants to go back there, it won't take long at all. Um, it'll be there in a couple of hours, if that. Um, we've had, um, with um, some of the partners who we've worked with in the past, we've, we've seen that um, well, the uh, Department of Game and Inland Fisheries has been monitoring, um, helping to monitor, along with um, William and Mary, some of the golden eagle populations in the western part of the state. They put um, GPS transmitters on some of those guys. There was one bird that took off from, from uh, the western, uh, from Highland County, Virginia, and um, it took off from that point um, with the satellite transmitter on it, and within two weeks it was in the, the northernmost point of Quebec, just before you start popping over to Baffin Island. Um, a couple of weeks later, it was back in Virginia again. It just took a little joyride up there. Up back again. So th these birds can travel a long ways very quickly if they want to. And uh, so if this bird wants to go back to the, the original area, which I suspect it probably will, um, it, it won't take long to get there whatsoever. So um, does anybody have any questions about this, this bird? Yeah. Um, <laughs> these birds have beautiful uh, heads of white feathers. Why are they called bald? <laughs> Any historians in the crowd? Bald, bald is an old English term. Okay. Uh, B-A-L-D-E. That actually means white. I so see. So the, the term piebald is a white spotted animal. So a bald eagle is, is a white eagle. So it's spelled B-A-L-D? Uh, or B-A-U-L-D? The old English term is. Okay. But it's, that's, that's the derivative. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we knew the bird was at least three years old because uh, until they're three, but I think three to five years, they they start turning white. And by five, they're mature birds with real white heads. Otherwise, their heads are brown or they're brown flecked with white as the white head starts to come in. So it takes about two years to come in to full white. Uh, it's well, it's it's a process, and there's a progression. We can actually age eagles by their plumage. So we can look at a, a, a two-year-old eagle and know by its head pattern that it's two years old. So there's a progression. Yeah, it starts with a little bit of white and that increases until so they're five. Do you know how old this one is? Mm -hmm. uh, if we, we know it's at least five because it's got the full white head. So that kind of gives us a minimum baseline if it wasn't banded before its first contact. And um, before we brought the bird down here today, uh, we actually banded it back at the Wildlife Center. Uh, since I'm one person here and I didn't know who else was going to be showing up, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to have the bird already banded instead of trying to fuss with it out in the field and stress the bird out even more before we go and actually toss it up and, and uh, release it back out into the wild. So, um, any other questions at this point? Do you know what a band number is? We can check when I get it out of the box. <laughs> I know. <laughs> One of my other colleagues actually banded the bird when, uh, when it was put into the crate this morning. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, looking at the competition on the top of the snag across the way over there, is there uh, every uh, We're gonna go the uh, conflict <laughs> with, with releasing a bird uh, with the others that are in the area? Um, I'm hoping not. <laughs> I'm hoping not. I, I, I actually have um, on occasion. There was, there was one particular case where uh, I believe it was, I was releasing a um, morning dove. And um, it was, we, we had been we had been babying this thing for for months, and eventually got to the point where we could release it. We brought it out to this beautiful natural habitat. We gave it a toss. It went up in the air, and then the merlin came out of nowhere. And <laughs> so you know, it's it's part of nature. This is what happens. So, and so I, I'm not sure actually if there are a nesting pair or more than nesting pair on this reservoir. Um, does anybody know? I don't know. I just had a question. Blair, do you know if there's any um, nesting pairs on the, on the lake here? I don't know for sure. Do you know there used to be a nesting <coughs> pair, but I don't know if the nest is still active or not. Would, but it's okay. on the far side of the lake. It's not close to the lake. Okay. I, would, I would say there's a, there's a good chance, especially if, if any of you guys that, are, that yeah. live around here, coming here at winter, during the winter time, when all the, when the, when the, 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 the large amount of coots that come out here that stay here in the winter time, it's amazing to watch the eagles swoop down on these birds. I mean, because they'll, they'll be within, within feet of you, and you can just watch it. They, don't, they pay you no mind. Huh. So it's, it's pretty amazing in the winter. Wow, wow. Road trip this morning. We probably have... Uh, what was the question? Uh, the question was, how, how often do ospreys actually attack eagles? And we, we usually get several into our center a year that have um, had osprey, um, either directly from an osprey attack or there's evidence on it from, from another large bird attack. Um, 
I think we're seeing because the, the bald eagle population is, is going up in Virginia, uh, as it is across the states, which is, which is fantastic, the, the nests are getting closer and closer together and there's more um, aggressive behavior going on between pairs. And so I think we're actually seeing a lot more um, uh, eagle, eagle interactions out there and um, uh, eagles fighting with other eagles and leaving lots of scars on their, especially on their legs as they tend to go and tell on each other and sort of fall out of the sky in these big, um, yeah, has anyone watched big scooping that video things. That's on, on the eagle camp? It's well, the YouTube, it is oh. unbelievable yeah. to see them whirling yeah. around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that second lockup, neither one wanted to let go. And I mean, they both crashed into the tree, but it's all legal loss. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fairly common interaction. It doesn't generally reach the level that, exactly. that, 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 that in, inflicted the injury that this bird had. Usually, you know, but there's competition. They're, they're two I'm big sorry, raptors. I'm sorry I arrived late. It's longer from Hampton than I thought. Um, is the one you're releasing today male or female? It's a male. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a small yeah, little male bird. One of, one of the birds that went to the wildlife center Five of us, two women and three men, uh, the animal control people of Gloucester, had said bird, he was in the woods and could not fly, but he could run about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what the final result on that bird was, but he was inflicted with horrible deep wounds that had to have come from another people. It was that bird stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so that was a fight in the air. No one saw it, but found the crash yeah, and many, many times we see all of these um, scars on the legs and such as incidental findings. Um, oftentimes the, um, this just happens and they come in for some other reason. And um, we just happen to see these and, and mark these, these incidents when we see them at that point. So, yes? Did you know that um, eagles go up higher than other birds like ospreys and then swoop down when they see the osprey going for their fish? They swoop down and steal the fish. Have been eagles will definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, eagles are, are wonderful, um, wonderful scavengers, and and so they'll um, they'll prey on on, on dead things on beaches. They're very opportunistic. I mean, they're they're smart that way. They'll go and chase ospreys to make them drop the fish. If you ever have a look at an osprey carrying a fish, it's usually almost always head first um, because it's more aerodynamic to, to fly in this direction with the head of the fish in that direction instead of backwards or sideways. And um, sometimes the the osprey has to juggle it around in order to get it into that position. And often eagles will see that and, and go in and and try to uh, steal the fish at that point. Yeah. I didn't know if maybe it was over, like, do they fight over that, or is it really going to be more of a territorial problem? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it can be either one. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm not the expert on, on eagle osprey behavior right. by any means, but um, <laughs> that's why we have people uh, in the crowd like this. So. <laughs> um, a, 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 an aggressive interaction like this is almost certainly um, the defense of a nesting site. Another question? Yes. Uh, um, other than protecting their young, are they natural enemies, osprey and eagles? They're, and enemy is kind of a loaded term. They're, they're competitors. Um, they're, they're, both, they're both existing primarily on the fish resource in the area. Um, so you will see competitive interactions. Right. In general, it's not to, to either bird's benefit to have an interaction escalate to the point where they're injured. Right. But generally, an osprey will give up the fish if an eagle harasses it. Um, but then vice versa, an osprey protecting a nest site will right, go to things right. against it. So it, yeah, again, it generally doesn't escalate to this point. Okay. Well, I think at this point I'm going to get the bird out of the car. It's probably getting a little hot in there. Um, the one thing that I have to mention, because Debbie, Debbie's waving at me right now, um, there's a wonderful group um, based, well, I think, I don't know where they're based out of, because they're based out of they're everywhere. All over. Um, all, over. All, all over. International. There we go. Um, the Nesty Organization, which is the Norfolk <laughs> there we go. But this is for all supporters anyway. Yes. This is for the Wildlife Center of Virginia. This is a donation. All the proceeds will be going to the Wildlife Center with a portion of the proceeds also going this year to the Department of Game and Animal Fisheries and the Center for Conservation Biology. This is going to hopefully build an enclosure for Buddy, which was the 2008 eagle that was uh, had contracted avian pox. He is a permanent resident at the Wildlife Center now, and he needs a permanent flight enclosure. So we're trying to raise money to build this for Buddy. And if anyone's interested, I do have some order forms here for the 2011. All the photos will include the Norfolk Botanical Garden eagles and their young from this year. Thank you. How do you order that? 
If, <laughs> I have, if anyone's interested, I have information. It's got the website on here that you can go online to order it. It can be ordered through the mail. It can be ordered through the online deal. And they will take phone orders, too.